We finished the last video having joined together our data sets and gotten an average temperature. Before we go on to reading the other data file, I would like to uh, look at statistical values for this one because it's often helpful when you're reading in things to look at descriptive statistics to see what exactly uh, the data set looks like. And Spark SQL has a very simple method for doing this. Now for just descriptive statistics, there is a describe method uh, and you can give it whatever columns you want and if you don't give it any columns it will do everything. Now I have to say to get ideal statistics for this instead of just having a thousand values I'd like to max this out. I was playing with this kind of offline and I can go up to a million values for both the the minimum and maximum temperature. So I'll do that. Um, interestingly, it does not appear to increase the runtime significantly. And we want to look at this description of the uh, 2017 maximum temperature data set to see what type of values we have for this and what their their distribution is and whatnot. It's just a good way of, of getting a feel for your data. In this case, it's also going to give us numbers. If you've been paying attention <clears throat> to the numbers in the earlier videos, you might have wondered about some of them. Uh, these numbers here, which are supposed to be average temperatures. Uh, describe, oh, it gives me back a data frame. I forgot to show that data frame. That was unfortunate. Okay. So now we'll let it run and see what types of values we have. So the describe gives us an average, it gives us a minimum, it gives us a maximum, it gives us a standard deviation. It does not produce things like a median um, that you have to go through other methods if you want to get the median for your data set. But these are values that generally give you a good feeling for what your data looks like while that's running, I'll just note, so those numbers are weird because it turns out that the units that are used for this are weird. Now, of course, in a real data analytics setting, if you're a data scientist, you have to look at your data, at descriptions of it, What what is it? Uh, so here's Tmax, uh, there's the count, we have a million values there, a mean value, uh, a standard deviation, <laughs> and in some ways, where I'm from, if this were in Fahrenheit, that could almost maybe look like a mean high temperature, uh, but that standard deviation would be just completely wrong. And then we have a minimum and a maximum. This minimum is probably an error code uh, in there. And the maximum is uh, clearly not a temperature that you'd want in either Fahrenheit or Celsius, or for that matter, even Kelvin. Um, if you go look at the documentation, for this data set, uh, there is a, um, let's see, there's the README, and we go down to where it has, say, temperatures in one of these files, so team and team X. it's in tenths of degrees Celsius, okay, that's why the numbers look so weird, is because that's not in Fahrenheit or Celsius, this is 63.9 Celsius. This is actually the average temperature is 9.3 Celsius. Um, okay, good to know. Since I'm making these videos in the uh, in the U.S. and the majority of my audience is in the U.S., it might actually be nice to take this and convert it to Fahrenheit so that it gives us numbers that we are more used to. So instead of dividing by two, I'm going to divide by 20 that gives us a value that would be in Celsius. And then I am going to multiply that by 1.8 and add 32 to get a value that is in uh, Fahrenheit. I really don't like that as a column header name. So I'm going to once again do a with column renamed. Unfortunately, this time, the column has a much more complex name for us. 
it will start off as that. But let's see, that's going to be O and then times 1.8. I'm just guessing here. We'll have to run this and see if that actually works. Otherwise, we'll have to, to copy this. So I will let that run. So that gave us descriptive statistics. Okay. There are other types of values that you will want to calculate. Uh, the data frame, in addition to the uh, describe, has a method called uh, stats or stat. So here is the stat, which gives you back a data frame stat functions. And it gives you the ability to get, for example, medians. You can get approximate quartiles. So you can figure out um, for a column exactly what the 25th, the, the 50th, the 75th, and I say exactly, but it's not actually. It's, it's approximate. And you get to tell it the relative error. How much error are you willing to, to accept in this? Uh, there's correlations between values, which can be helpful for comparing uh, two things to see if they're strongly correlated with, with one another, uh, or a covariance, cross-tabulating. There's just a number of different statistical methods that are in the stat uh, call, this data frame stat functions, that can help you. In addition to that, there are ways of aggregating data on a data frame, which are significant uh, to us. And in fact, we'll be using some of these in a uh, in a later video. And the functions that you can call for doing your aggregations, most of them are located in this functions object in the SQL package. And you can see this is actually, it's a rather long list of, <coughs> of methods. Uh, it does include things like mean and min and standard deviation and whatnot. Uh, but it also has other methods for example, date time methods. If we're dealing with dates, there's basic math methods that you can, or functions that you can call to to do transformations. So a lot of times you're going to import the functions sql.functions.underscore so that you can get access uh, to a lot of these methods, which can either be used to combine values together and aggregate, or they can be used because you'll notice these take columns and they give you back columns. Uh, so they can be used either for aggregation or as just things you apply to a function uh, in doing a calculation similar to what we did here, but if the math was more complex, uh, we'd do it differently. Okay, and so, oh my gosh, they parenthesized everything, which is why my string here in the rename was not, was not a match. Okay, so... We'll finish off that video here. We will come back and we will look at one of these aggregations uh, for, for pulling data together uh, and also talk about reading in a different data file.